So in this clip we're going to go through the solution of the Bayesian estimation exercise. We have a coin, it comes up with heads or tails, y i shall be a random variable with the outcome of the i throw, 1 is for heads and 0 for tails. Pi is the probability of heads, so of y equals 1, we'll call it success here. And flat has three coins. He has a uh, normal coin, okay, and two biased coins. The biased coins have success probabilities of 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 and a normal coin of 0 0.5. So now he has brought one of the coins, we don't know which one. All we see is four outcomes, okay, heads, 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 and then the fourth outcome is tail. That's what we see. So our yi takes the values 1, 1, 1, and then 0. So when we do this with Bayesian estimation, we need a prior distribution. So let's say you you think there's an 80% probability that he's brought the fair coin and 10% each that he's brought one of the biased coins. So what we're going to use is our uh, proportionality, proportionality relationship, which is at the core of Bayesian, Bayesian estimation. And that's this one. And what are all these things here? We know that last term, this is what we call the prior probability for pi. Then we have the likelihood of the data given a certain value of pi and what we get is the posterior probability of pi conditional on the data. So that prior probability is what we have here now. You think that there's an 80% probability is brought the uh, fair coin and 10% each for the two biased ones. Here we only have three possible values for pi, so we're therefore dealing with a discrete distribution for pi. That makes our life much, much easier. Of course, there will be many Bayesian examples where you have continuous distributions. Now, the likelihood, this uh, we now need to proceed. Now, if uh, the i've coin toss gives a 1, and probability for that would be pi, not just our success probability. The probability for uh, the i've coin to be a 0 is going to be 1 minus pi. Okay, 1 minus the success probability. So we can write that down for the two different outcomes, or we can write it down in uh, generic form for either outcome, and then we write the probability for yi given pi is pi times yi plus 1 minus pi times 1 minus yi. So this will specialize to the two cases uh, just written down up here. So if yi equal 1, we just have that first part and then that second part is going to be 0 because of 1 minus 1 at the end. If yi is equal to 0, we end up with 1 minus pi and that first part is 0 because of the yi. So we are going to solve this problem now by updating after every throw. The last part of the exercise will see a different technique leading to the same result, but for starters we'll update the posterior and then the prior after every throw. So firstly, our random variable pi, the unknown um, probability for heads, can take three values only, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Now let's start with our prior distribution here, and we call that the prior zero, our starting prior. And we will update that, and that's just transferred from the question information, 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.1. So now what we need next is, let's just, um, so what we now need is the likelihood of the data given the pi times the prior. Right? That's basically just this relationship up here. Okay. Likelihood of the data or probability of the data given any value of pi times the prior probability. So the first observation is a 1. That means what's the probability of a 1 given pi equals 0 0.25? Well that's just 0 0.25 and then we need to multiply with the prior for 0 0.25 and that's 0 0.1. Then success probability if pi was 0 0.5 would be 0 0.5 times the relevant prior probability 0 0.8 and then success probability 0 0.75 times the prior 0 0.1 again. So when we calculate these values we just get uh, these 0 0.025, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0
0.4 and 0.075. Now this is not really a distribution because if we calculate the sum of all these probabilities, we actually only get to 0.5. So now we need to, that's why we had the proportionality sign and not sort of the is distributed as sign. So we basically rescale these to one and that will then be our posterior probability. And that's easy, we we'll just need to multiply each by two to get the sum to one. So we have 0 0.05, 0 0.8, 0 0.15. And how does that compare to the prior? It has changed. It has moved probability from the probability equal to 0 0.25 to 0 0.075. And this will now be our updated prior. For the next step, we'll use that as our prior. So now comes the second piece of information, the y2. Again, we calculate the probability of the data times the prior, y2 was equal to 1, so we'll do go through the same step. Success is 0 0.25 times the prior 0 0.05, then success at pi equals 0 0.5, probability is 0 0.5 times the prior 0 0.8, and then 0 0.75 as we have a 1 times 0 0.15. Okay, and we continue this on. So this can get a little bit tedious, so we'll do it in Excel. The structure of this table is like the table we had just created. It has the probability as on top, that's green one underneath the first prior. And what we now need to calculate is the probability of success. We'll implement the generic formula. So we have the uh, success probability 0 0.25 times G3, that's the one, plus 1 minus the success probability, and we're, of course we fix it always in the first row, times 1 minus the realization, which is in G3, and here we fix the column. Okay, so, and this we basically now need to copy across to the to the other probabilities for 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. So what we have here was the likelihood times the prior, and what we forgot is actually times the prior. So we need to multiply with C2, that's not quite right. We need to put the first bit, the uh, probability of the data in parentheses. Okay, because there was a plus in here. So that's right, 0 0.025, that's what we had before. Now we copy it across. Here we calculate the sum. That should be 0 0.5 as before on the table, that's right. And then we want the updated prior, which is the scaled version of that, which is take the values and divide by 0 0.5. And we fix the column here, Then we can copy it across. And let's see, that should sum up to one. So that's fine. So that was what, so far, that's the same calculation we've done before to get this update prior 5%, 80%, 15%. Now we just copy these two lines down. And since we have the observed outcomes on the right-hand side already in, we've done everything. Let's just check that everything works all right. You, know, you need to confirm with yourself or satisfy yourself that these are all the correct calculations, that we always use the right terms. And here we have the basically four times updated posterior. So let us transfer that result over to our worksheet. So after performing a few more of these updating steps, remember the fourth step, the observation is zero, not one. So the um, we then use 1 minus pi in the calculation, it's not pi. We get the fourth, that would be what would be the fourth prior or the posterior distribution after updating with the fourth observation. And this was the result we had about 2% for pi equals 0.25, 81% for pi equals 5, and 17% for pi equals 0.75. So they have changed from the first prior to the last posterior. We have quite a bit of change, and basically probability has moved from pi equals 0.25 to pi equals 0.75. Still about 80% probability that he brought, Flat brought the fair coin. So this is the posterior probability conditional on all our four observations. That's one way how we could write that. And 
it dependent on these four outcomes. Okay, one, 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 and O. Oh. So, part B. We now use a different prior distribution, and here someone thinks there's absolutely no possibility that flat proto coin with pi equals 0 0.75. This is ruled out. I see whatever now our data evidence says, this is going to be ruled out, and we will soon see that we'll get always zeros in that right hand column. So all we need in our table actually, and that's why this is quite handy, we'll change the prior in the first line or the initial prior. That was 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0. And all the calculations should still be correct if we've done it correctly. And what we now see our posterior after four updating steps, after updating with the information of all four throws, is this one, 0 0.15, 0.15. So for our three outcomes, pi equals 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.75, we now get the following posterior distribution after updating with information from all four throws. The last outcome has probability zero, and then we have about 16% and 84%. So this has changed now quite dramatically from the prior, which was 05, 05, 0. It moved to 0.16 to and 0.84. So this has really changed significantly from the prior, and that was because the prior, given the data, was a pretty bad prior. In the next sub-question, we're using what's called an uninformative prior. What that means is that uh, Sasha doesn't want to put any emphasis on any of the three possible values for pi. That means since we still have to deliver a prior distribution, we have to, for the three different values, 0.25, 0.5 and 0.75, we basically put the same probabilities on each of them, a third. So this is what we mean it as an uninformative prior. So, and then we just uh, want to calculate the posterior probability again, and we want to compare that to that in part A. So what we should stress here is that, that this type of prior really emphasizes that we have a set this prior has no view, no prior view on what value pi should take. Okay, so that implies that really the data only will determine what the posterior distribution looks like. And that's different to part A, where it was a combination of the prior and the data that determined how the posterior looked like. Now the posterior will only be determined by the data. Okay, and the data proportion is of course of 0.75, 3 out of 4 we had successes. So we'll go back to our spreadsheet. We put in our new prior, 1 over 3, for each of the three possible pies, and our worksheet uh, sheet will do the magic. And down here we see what the result is. It is basically, let's copy these posterior probabilities after four updating steps. So after using information in Y1 to Y4, the posterior is 0 0.065, 0 0.3478, and 0 0.5870. So we can see that this is quite different. We have a much bigger weight on that 0 0.75 possibility. The reason why in A we didn't get such a strong weight is because we had such a strong belief that really we had a fair coin, and therefore pi was 0.5. And we had a really strong belief, and all that the data managed was to move probability from 0.25 to 0.75. Now we have no such strong belief, we have basically no view, and now we let the data decide, and since 0.75 is actually the success proportion in the data, we get a strong probability here. The next sub-question, part D, basically asked how, as a frequentist, so non-Bayesian, we would look at the data and find information about that pi. Here the difference is that while pi is still unknown, it's fixed. And what we are lo looking for is a best estimator. Now, if you remember your first-year statistics, you know that the sample proportion of successes is the best estimator 
for pi, and that is pi hat, that's 3 out of 4 here, 0 0.75. So this would be our pi hat. Now, of course, as frequentist, and after doing econometrics, you understand that pi hat is a random variable, and that 0 0.75 is just a draw from a distribution. That distribution has expected value pi, which is, of course, unknown, and variance of that distribution is pi times 1 minus pi divided by n. This is usually estimated by replacing the pi with pi hat, so as pi hat times 1 minus pi hat divided by n. So now we have an estimator, the pi hat, we have moments for the distribution, expectation and variance. Now we know again from your first year statistics you will know that that pi hat is normally distributed but just for sufficiently large uh, samples n. And we really don't have that here with n equals to 4. If you had a sufficiently enough sample then inference on the unknown pi population statistic would be pretty straightforward. No, but we're not going to do that here. In the last part E we consider whether we can uh, do without this stepwise updating and whether we can consider all four observations in this case in one go. We will still rely on our basic Bayesian probability relationship which relates posterior to prior and likelihood but now instead of going step by step we will consider all four observations in one go. So three successes, one failure, so to say. So what does that mean? We we'll now want the posterior for pi given information y1 to y4 and that is proportional to the likelihood of y1 to y4 given pi times the prior. Now here we got to recognize that really what we have is a binomial experiment. We have a, um, a coin which was thrown four times. We have three successes in these four coin tosses and uh, this has the hallmarks of a binomial experiment. Let's call successes x and the number of throws n and then you may remember that from your first year statistics course that the probability of such an in such an binomial experiment of x successes in n throws is calculated as such and that uh, here is 3 out of 4. How many three combinations of 3 can we get out of 4? And we have 3 successes and n was 4. Now 3 out of 4 that's actually 4. If you need to remember how to calculate this here's the formula. So we get a 4 here. So let's consider our uh, table again. It will now just contain fewer rows. We have three possible outcomes for pi, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. That hasn't changed. Our prior is as in the first sub-question, 0 0.1, 0 0.8 and 0 0.1. And now we need the probability of three successes given a particular pi and then we need to multiply that with the prior which is just given up here. So if we substitute 0 0.25 in our probability calculation what we get is 0 0.0469. You can establish that yourself then multiply it with the prior of 0 0.1 for pi equals 0 0.25. That will give us a result of 0 0.00469. Now we consider the case where pi is 0 0.5. We get a different value for the likelihood of three or the probability of three successes. It's 0 0.25 times the prior again, which is 0 0.8, so that will deliver 0 0.2. Then we consider the case where pi is 0 0.75. We get a new probability for three successes out of four is 0 0.4219 times the prior 0 0.1. Here we get a result of 0 0.04219. Now if we sum all these guys up, there will be less than 1. In fact, there will be 0 0.246875. And to get our posterior, all we're going to do is we're going to rescale these last three probabilities to sum up to 1.
So, and that will then be the posterior probability of pi given our four data points. So, once you do that, we get the following probabilities 0.019, 0 0.8101, and 0 0.1709. And it turns out these are exactly the same probabilities, posterior probabilities, as the ones we got in part A. So, when we do the stepwise updating as in part A, or the updating in one go considering all data points as in part E doesn't really matter. So there was no need for the stepwise updating but I used it in the lecture in the beginning of this question because it's a quite it's a quite neat device and you can imagine how if the data appear through time you can use that.